Hi, my name is Natalie Swavely. I'm a resident at Virginia Commonwealth University, and today I'm going to be talking about phases of ischemia-induced decompensation demonstrated in an ex vivo porcine bladder model. I have no disclosures. Um, chronic ischemia has been established as a risk factor for lower urinary tract symptoms. There has been an established association between cardiovascular diseases with uh, lower urinary tract symptoms. However, there is a lack of mechanistic understanding of this association. This incompletely explored association offers a number of areas for further research and development, including establishing the mechanistic link between ischemia and lower, ur lower urinary tract symptoms, determining the natural history of ischemia-mediated lower urinary tract symptoms from acute to chronic ischemia, and developing novel treatments directed at the etiology of LUTs rather than simply symptom control. Therefore, the study of this project was to use an ex vivo perfused porcine bladder model to define the duration of ischemia leading to changes in bladder function, as well as determine at what point those changes are reversible. Porcine bladders were obtained from local abattoirs immediately after slaughter. Their uh, urinary tract and vasculature was removed and blocked, and vasculature was cold perfused with a heparinized solution. The bladders were then placed in a physiologic buffer and transported on ice to the lab. The bladders were then placed into a customized heated humidified chamber, as seen in this picture, to replicate physiologic conditions. The bilateral superior vesicle arteries were cannulated uh, and perfused. Here you can see the aortic stem with bilateral cannula in place. A 16 French drainage catheter, um, as well as a urodynamics catheter, were uh, placed into the urethra. These can also be seen in the picture, as well as the ligated uh, ureters to prevent um, leakage uh, throughout the procedure. Here's a picture of our entire setup, including our humidified uh, chamber with perfusion pumps, as well as our urodynamics equipment. Bladders were filled uh, in a retrograde manner to 250 cc's. They were then actively voided by installation of a um, potassium enriched buffer. The drainage catheter was released after the peak of the contraction and pressure data was collected continuously throughout the filling and voiding. Viability was ensured with two uh, pre-fill and void cycles. Um, all bladders then underwent four fill void cycles with varying degrees of ischemia, which was established by controlling the perfusion rate of a gassed physiologic buffer. This included a control, um, which the uh, oxygenated buffer was um, run at four milliliters per minute, partial ischemia, where the rate was decreased to two milliliters per minute, global ischemia with zero milliliters per minute, and reperfusion, where the oxygenated buffer was again increased to four milliliters per minute. Um, bladders were also held at their perfusion rate for a wait period for either 15 or 30 minutes uh, depending on which group the bladder was in. Pressure data was continuously collected. Passive pressure was uh, the pressure immediately before the contraction. The total pressure was the pressure measured at the peak of the contraction. And the active pressure uh, was the pressure that was actually created during the contraction. So the total pressure minus the passive pressure. 19 porcine, bl porcine bladders were used, including 15 a minute ischemia group having eight bladders and the 30 minute ischemia group group having 11 bladders. Looking at the passive pressure from our 15 minute group, the passive pressure increased 21% with partial ischemia, increased again 39% with global ischemia and returned to its baseline with reperfusion. Reciprocally, when we look at the active pressure, this decreased 11% with partial ischemia, decreased 23% with global ischemia, and then return to its baseline with reperfusion. With these reciprocal changes, the total pressure remained constant throughout the entirety um, of the procedure. When we increase that ischemia time to 30 minutes, the passive pressure remained relatively unchanged. There was a slight decrease with ischemia, however, this was not statistically significant. However, the active pressure decreased 30% with partial ischemia, decreased 61% with global ischemia, and only recovered partially 72% with reperfusion. The total pressure decreased 18% with partial ischemia, 34% with global ischemia, and again, only had a partial recovery 
of 82% with reperfusion. So in conclusion, this ex vivo porcine uh, bladder model shows us that there are measurable changes uh, that can be seen in detrusor function with ischemia. With 15 minutes of ischemia, we saw an increase in our passive pressure with a reciprocal decrease in the active pressure and recovery to baseline with reperfusion. This shows a compensated and stiffer phase that is recoverable. As we increase the um, ischemia time, we see a decrease in active pressure, a decrease in total pressure, and an incomplete recovery with reperfusion, showing a decompensated and underactive phase. With increased ischemia, there is a progression of detrusor function from a compensated and stiff phase to a decompensated underactive phase. This provides possible mechanistic insight into an ischemia mediated progression from overactivity to underactivity with increasing periods of ischemia. Thank you.